So we've all heard that NASA technology is in pretty much every part of our daily lives, but I wanted to know where exactly in consumer products it was and a little bit more about the stories behind those inventions. So today we're at Target and I'm on a mission to find seven products we have NASA to thank for. Let's go. Real quick, I'm Camille and I'm an aerospace engineer turned space content creator. If you like space technology and want to learn how it impacts you, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Okay, let's head to the best section first. I don't know about you, but I cannot leave Target without going to the technology section. It's like a magnet. I just can't stop myself. Okay, I found something immediately. Smartphones, specifically the cameras in them. Back in the 1990s, an engineer, Eric Fossum, was working at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory on digital imaging technology. Eric was an expert on the current state of the art called CCD, but he believed he could make digital imagery better with smaller and lighter components using a different technology called CMOS. Despite everyone telling him he was stupid for working on it, he ended up developing something that is now used in nearly everything with a camera these days. This technology called CMOS Active Pixel Sensor is produced using standard silicon manufacturing processes as opposed to the more expensive production techniques required for CCD tech. It's also much faster and consumes less power, which makes it ideal for smartphones, GoPros, webcams, and more. One down, six to go. Let's head to the sleep section and find a memory foam pillow. Memory foam is probably one of the most well-known NASA spin-off technologies, but what exactly did they have to do with its invention? In 1966, NASA was interested in better impact protection for airline seats in the event of an accident. So an engineer named Charles Yost had previously helped NASA build a recovery system for the Apollo Command Module, and they contracted him for this project too. From that, he developed a flexible polyurethane foam that would conform to whatever was pressing against it, then return to its original state once that pressure was removed which of course we now refer to as memory foam. In the decades after that, memory foam was refined for a bunch of different applications, including better sleep and crazy pillow fights. Okay, speaking of Apollo, let's head to the appliances section. Did you know that we have NASA to thank for dustbusters? NASA wanted astronauts to drill into the moon and bring back samples, but there of course aren't any outlets on the moon. So NASA said, okay, we need a cordless power tool. Coincidentally, Black and Decker had just invented the first cordless power drill. So NASA worked with them to create one that would work on the moon. It needed to be lightweight, consume as little power as possible, and be able to operate in the harsh environment on the moon. Then over the next few decades, Black and Decker refined the technology that could work in a vacuum into a vacuum the first dust buster in 1984. Three down, four to go. I just spotted the health section, so let's go find something there. This actually operates on the same technology that measures the temperature of stars and planets, just miniaturized and commercialized. Back in 1983, NASA launched the first infrared telescope in space called IRAS, which was the precursor to the more familiar Spitzer and James Webb telescopes. These could see through clouds of interstellar gas and dust to see newborn stars by measuring the infrared energy radiating off of them, otherwise known as heat. JPL then worked with a company to turn that technology into an infrared thermometer that could take someone's temperature in less than two seconds, without having to put toxic mercury thermometers in their mouth. I can't believe we're over halfway through our quest. I want to challenge myself in this next section, accessories. You might have heard that NASA invented scratch-resistant lenses for astronaut visors, but did you know they also invented UV-blocking sunglasses? Two JPL scientists were studying light in space, specifically the harm it can cause. At the same time, they were looking at the harmful radiation produced during welding and laser work. Solving both a space and terrestrial problem at the same time, they created a lens filter technology to block out harmful wavelengths of light in both welding masks and sunglasses. And the crazy part is that they took their inspiration from birds. Evidently, eagles and hawks have special oil droplets in their eyes that filter harmful light, UV, while allowing vision-enhancing light, red, green, and orange, to pass through. So they incorporated that science into a filtering system that uses light filtering dyes and UV-absorbing zinc oxide particles. So thanks to NASA, we get to wear stylish sunglasses that also protect our eyes from harmful UV radiation. Y'all, I'm getting so hungry, but we only have two more to go. Let me go grab a snack for later, though. You might have had freeze-dried astronaut ice cream before, but freeze-drying is actually a really common technique in a lot of consumer products now, like this freeze-dried fruit. Here's how NASA modernized an ancient Bolivian practice and made not only lightweight and nutritious food for astronauts, but also all of us. So over 1,500 years ago, an ancient high Andes Bolivian people known as the Aymara wanted to eat these wild potatoes around them, but they were toxic. They figured out that they could get rid of the toxins by freeze-drying them using the high altitude and cold temperatures of the Andes mountains. NASA modernized this technique, but the process is the same. 
Freeze the food, utilize a low pressure environment, and put a little bit of heat into the system to remove the water from the frozen food. This results in a much more nutritious food with a longer shelf life and faster rehydration time than other dehydration techniques. Now, thanks to NASA, we have everything from yummy snacks to emergency and camping food. And actually, while we're here in the food section, this entire section is enabled by NASA technology. So number seven, food safety. But before we get into that, I really wanna eat these snacks. So let's finish up here and head back to the studio. All right, y'all, we're back in my studio and I got my snacks. Let's finish up. So back in the Apollo days, NASA needed a way to ensure that astronauts' food was safe. We couldn't have a bunch of astronauts with food poisoning on the moon. So they worked with Pillsbury to create something called HACCP. This process was based on NASA's strict engineering management requirements, the same ones that got humanity safely to the moon and back. Basically, instead of just spot checking food at the end of the production line, like was the standard in the food industry at the time, they started to check the food for safety at each stage of production using a method called critical control points, that NASA process. For each food, they identified where in the process new hazards could be introduced, what those hazards could be, and how they could mitigate them before the whole batch was spoiled. This might seem like common sense today, but it was revolutionary at the time and actually took quite some time and some unfortunate food poisoning deaths to be adopted by the food industry. But now we don't really have to worry about the safety of our food thanks to NASA tech developed for Apollo. That was surprisingly really easy and all of that was just in my small local target. It's crazy how much NASA tech we use every single day. Imagine if we never had space exploration. Every part of our lives would look so different. So let me know, what's your favorite piece of tech developed for space? Share it in the comments and me and Galaxy, we'll see you next time. She's, she's, she's done. <laughs>